for more on this, uh, let's talk to Craig Earlham, who's Senior Market Analyst at the Foreign Exchange Company, Oanda. Good to have you back on the program with us, Craig. So as we've been saying, we've had multiple Russian banks removed from SWIFT. How have world markets reacted? Understandably, very negatively, uh, as your previous guest alluded to with the ruble. I think it's most evident here. Um, Russian stock's not trading today, so we don't really see the full impact um, there until they start trading again. But it's clear from the currency market movements how much uncertainty there now is over the Russian economy and how damaging these new um, these economic sanctions are. We have to remember that last week, Europe and the US was quite widely criticised for the initial bout of sanctions that were announced, that they were too light touch, that they weren't going to act as a deterrent. Well, they've, they've certainly followed through with something that packs a much bigger punch. And uh, it's really taking its toll today on the ruble. And it's really going to take its toll on the Russian economy as well. And we're hearing that uh, Britain is going to introduce sanctions on Sparebank. How crucial will that be in perhaps uh, taking things to another level? Well, I think all of the sanctions are, are really critical. Uh, obviously, going after the banks, um, which are basically the backbone of the economy, um, is, going to be, is going to be massive. It also the aim of many of these sanctions, including the sanctions on the banks, but there's people, there's, com there's companies, there's obviously um, the central bank, uh, which is massive as well. All of these efforts are designed to impose maximum uh, pain on the Russian economy uh, and maximum pressure on Putin as a result, and uh, while minimizing to the best extent uh, the impacts, the negative implications on the global economy. There's always going to be implications for the global economy when you see sanctions so, he so heavily placed on a country uh, like the size of uh, the size and importance of Russia. But the effort of these, with the SWIFT system, for example, as well, and only highlighting certain banks is to try and max, uh, maximize the, the impact, but also try not to disrupt too heavily things that we rely on. And I think oil and gas is going to be key there, but also other commodities as well uh, is another one. Well, I wanted to ask you a little bit about those. We're seeing rises in uh, several commod commodities, <coughs> notably oil and gold. Yes, so we're seeing risk premiums effectively being priced in. And there's, that, that kind of goes two or threefold, really. The risk premium arises from potential unintentional disruptions. Uh, that's through the conflict in the Ukraine. And obviously, that's a passage in particular for uh, Russian gas to Europe. Europe gets 40% of its gas from Russia. So obviously, it's a massive uh, a massive buyer of Russian gas. So there's the there's a potential uh, unintentional supply disruptions. We don't expect that we are going to see oil and gas used as a weapon, uh, per se, uh, in these counter sanctions, but it's always something that's on the table. So we're always going to have to see risk premiums being priced in for the potential that we get the kind of spillover that we're hoping can be uh, avoided. Uh, so there's that, there's that as well. So those are contributing to the higher prices of certain commodities like uh, oil and gas, uh, but also uh, a few other commodities as well. Palladium, for example, Russia is one of the world's, well, world's largest producers of palladium, so we're seeing prices soar there as well. Gold is different play. Gold is a safe haven. Gold is an inflation hedge. $100 oil, um, high commodity prices at a time when we're already seeing soaring inflation around the world. We're seeing gold very heavily favoured. But then obviously the, the risk aversion we're seeing in the markets as well also does push uh, traders towards uh, gold as a safe haven, a traditional historic safe haven as well. So yes, we're seeing commodity rises across the board for slightly different reasons, but it's all linked ultimately to the risk uh, that we're seeing in the Ukraine. And as we heard from our correspondent, uh, long lines at ATM machines, concerns of a possible widespread run on the banks and maybe some banks going under as a result. Yes, and I, I imagine, obviously, the, the, the Russian government they are, are going to be very keen to support these banks, uh, but it is going to put, it's going to really intensify the pressure. It's one thing worrying that your deposits aren't safe, which is ultimately is going to be one of the, the fears now crossing the minds of people these queues do make matters worse. We remember back in the start of the global financial crisis here in the UK, seeing queues outside of building societies. All of a sudden, these queues became longer and longer because people started to fear for their own savings. That type of thing has the potential to happen in Russia here as well. But it's also people wanting to withdraw their cash so that they can convert it before the currency depreciation has too massive an impact on their own savings. So there's multiple reasons why we're seeing these queues start to form. So the risks are heavy. The Russian government is going to have to really work hard to try and convince the public that their savings are not at risk here. Uh, and again, another reason why these sanctions are really going to ramp up and intensify the pressure on Vladimir Putin, who may be starting to think that he's uh, miscalculated on this one. Craig Earlham from Oanda, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.